She's been on the front lines of our health care crisis. She has a deep knowledge of what the burden of crushing costs does to our families and businesses. So let me say directly to these Americans, you deserve better. I apologize. I'm accountable to you for fixing these problems. Last week, we announced that 7.1 million Americans have signed up for private insurance through the marketplace. As of this week, 400,000 additional Americans have signed up, and we expect that number to continue to grow. That was a quick look back at Kathleen Sebelius's tumultuous tenure as Health and Human Services Secretary. In an unexpected move, Sebelius is expected to announce her resignation today. Good morning and welcome to the News Sub. I'm Simon Constable. We're going to have that and more. Let's start with Sebelius now. Kathleen Sebelius has received much of the blame for the botched rollout of the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. She endured criticisms from both sides in Capitol Hill. And we've got Erin Zittner to join us now and discuss this further. Um, that was a, obviously an interesting look back. She really did botch the rollout of this in, in, in quite a way. Is it fair to say she's walking the plank now because of that? Well, absolutely. Uh, she presided over the biggest political disaster of the Obama administration. Now that said, it's traditional to have turnover after a president's first term, and she stuck around for quite a long time, I think partly as to, to see the implementation of the law through and partly as a point of pride not to leave in the middle of a disaster but to stick around for the recovery. But yeah, this administration needs a new face to carry this law forward, and they're going to get one. Okay. Now, her, her resignation for some people, and not everybody by any means, but for some people hasn't come soon enough. Let's listen. You have said America should hold you for accountable, which is why today, Madam Secretary, I repeat my request for you to resign. And that was Senator Pat, Pat Roberts there calling for her resignation. It has now come a uh, substantial time after that. And uh, Aaron, we have a replacement. Uh, it's Sylvia Matthews Burwell. Uh, what do we know about her? Well, she comes quite versed, well versed in the subject and uh, on a pretty good political grounding. She came out of the Clinton White House. She was in the White House on the National Economic Council. She was in the Clinton Treasury Department. She uh, went to Harvard and Oxford and uh, has corporate experience. She worked at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which means she has uh, some grounding in global health issues, worked with Bill Gates, and uh, then was uh, head of the Walmart Foundation. Now, she's currently the White House budget director. She's been that for about a year, so she's already been involved in fiscal policy and in the implementation of the health law. And when she came up for confirmation last year, she was confirmed 96 to zero. So she goes into her confirmation process pretty strong. So, and uh, she's got that bipartisan support, which is so hard to get. I mean, Congress is d divided, but it sounds like she's managed to bridge that gap. Even John McCain on, on the right saying, yeah, she might be a good fit. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's a political year. It's an election year. And in many ways, the person leading the health law is far less consequential in a political context than the law itself. What I'm saying is, if you're a Democrat facing a tough re-election. Uh, you now are going to vote for the person implementing the health law and your opponent is immediately going to come out and say, aha, your senator just voted again for Obamacare. And so uh, Democrats will have to decide uh, whether it's a risk for any of them to vote for anyone to be HHS, HHS secretary right now in an, in an election year. Okay, we shall see. It sounds like we'll uh, have lots to keep us all busy. Thank you very much. Aaron Zittner, always a pleasure.